Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Tutor and in this video I will show you how to design a mat footing. So basically uh, we will be using this excel sheet to design the mat footing considering uh, the reference from the book of Mr. A.K. Zen. So this is from the Wrap Foundation chapter from the A.K. Zen book. So firstly we will be designing the footing considering these parameters and then we will also check for the footing that is for this building because the number of column is different in every type of mat footing so I have tried my best to make sure that uh, this excel sheet will work for the major cases but anyhow uh, some data has to be entered manually that is uh, with the number of column increased we have to add the number of rows so I will show you that as well and if you want this excel sheet you can simply click on the link in the description box to request the access for the uh, mat footing so basically I will be providing this excel sheet that is for the uh, two numbers of column in x and two numbers of column in y direction that is total four numbers of column so this is the basic uh, mat footing that is for the four numbers of column and if you want to increase the number of columns then I will show you here and accordingly you can design the mat footing so now let us take the reference with the problem from the occasion so you can see here designer wrapped footing for the layout so we have this layout and we have this soil bearing capacity as 65 and the column size as 30 by 30 and using grade of concrete 30 and 500 grade steel so using these parameters we will be designing the wrap foundation so let's start size of column so as per the question it is 300 by 300 grade of concrete 30 Il, this is 500 okay and bearing capacity is 65 depth of footing so you can generally keep this as 1.52 now grid is spacing along x and grid is spacing along y so considering this as x and this as y grid spacing so we have to enter the number of spacing that is the number of grid so here we have one two three four so but now we have only two now we have to add the number of grid lines so make sure that you insert rows above the red highlighted cells only so make sure to click over here and add so you can see it is added above the red cell so insert now number of rows is four so simply you can copy and paste over here and name this so for now it is one two three four so one dash two two dash three three dash four and for the last grid make sure that it should be four dash zero that means the last grid and zero and along y it is three so for now it is two let me add over here and it is simply two three and this will be three zero now grid spacing along one two so this is seven 7 and 7 in this direction and for the last it will be 0 similarly you can also find this in the e tabs as well so while considering the spacing we leave the last uh, grid spacing as 0 similarly 6 6 6 6 and the final one will be 0 projection towards left from the face of the column so this is from the center of the column and I have prepared this for the considering projection towards left from the face of column so 0 0.3 is the column width so considering 0 0.3 so this will be 0 0.15 on either side so projection towards left so this is the left this is the right this is the lower and this is the upper so you can see all side projection as 0 0.15 from the face and 0 0.3 from the center of the column don't get confused and we get the total length of the footing and total width of the footing number of span along x-axis so 1 2 3 and similarly along y it is 1 2 so this will define the condition that is equivalent we will be considering this for the moment calculation either we will take wl square by 10 or wl square by 8 now you can see here so this graph will be automatically generated for now we have entered the value for exact number of columns but we haven't prepared the table yet so that is why we are not seeing the desired outline of the mat footing so for this we have to update this table that is calculation of eccentricity so a little bit tricky part is uh, here in this excel sheet so we have 1c 1b so this is 1c 1b now we have to add 1a similarly we have 2c 2b so we have to add 2a but for the grid 3 and 4 we have to add 3c 3b 3a so simultaneously so i'll show you that so little bit tricky part over here insert rows of a blue highlighted cell only so simply insert over here so you can do that by control plus sign drag this down this is the load of the column so this is 550 600 and 500 
This is the position of the column considering origin as 0 0 and these are the type of column. So this will be the edge column, this will be the face column, this will be the edge col corner column and this is the central column. So for now it is corner column. Now similarly you can add for 2a as well. Loading. This will be face. So this is simply multiplication of force into x perpendicular distance. Now we have to add for 3 and 4. So for this we will add a bunch of rows. Simply copy this value, paste it over here and then we have to update this. This was for grid 2, this will be for grid 3. So simply grid 2 was 12. So this will be 13 for the grid 3. Similarly we want c that is 2c so it will be this value d17 now drag it down other values are automatically updated now for the fourth grid this will be 14 and this should be the previous value that is 17. It may not be 17 for if the number of the column is greater, if the number of rows is different here. Now load. But make sure you don't delete this red cell because I have uh, considered the sum using the value up to this point. So don't make that mistake. And the final one will be again corner face and corner so you can simply copy these three value and paste it over here so total load is 1300 13300 and this is the moment along x and y now center of mass foundation x area that is length divided by 2 and similarly width by 2 so we'll get the center of gravity of the foundation similarly center of gravity of load so we'll be considering summation of moment divided by axial load for that direction and we'll get the center of gravity of load in that direction so for x bar and y bar we get 11.27 and 6.53 you can cross check with this as well so you can simply find the value that is eccentricity along x it is 0 0.47 so for now in our case also it is 0 0.47 and for ey that is 0 0.225 and it is also 0 0.225 that is 0 0.3 meter round of value that is also okay so eccentricity check is done now we will compute the net soil pressure we have to use this formula to compute the net soil pressure so p is the axial load and a is the area of the footing my mx are the moment and iy ix are the moment of inertia and x and y are the uh, position that is soil pressure at different points so we will compute the value considering this coordinates so ix bd cube by 12 and iy being b cube by b cube d by 12 area of footing l into b self weight of footing so basically this is the area of footing into depth provided for now we can see here in the value i have provided as 720 mm so this comes as 49 4898.88 kN. so 25 is the unit weight of concrete live load so if it was a basement then we have provided the live load for example 2.5 kN per meter square that is for the parking now total load 18199 kN. Similarly, Mx this is the moment and this is computed with, with respect to axial load into eccentric distance about y axis. So, similarly, My will get this value P by A. Now we can get all this value. Now we we'll simply substitute the value over here and get the value we required. So, for now, we have overall 12 points. So, we can compute the pressure for 12 points now let me maximize the window so 1 2 3 so for each grid we'll create three rows and compute the value simply drag this down drag this down drag this down make sure to add the value over the highlighted cells 
here you can see 1c, 1b, 1a, all these parameters. So now let me add for the grid 3 and 4, it will be automatically calculated. Now let me delete all this. So you will see a difference in the value because the book haven't considered the self weight of footing. So if we don't self consider that, let me put this value as 0, then it is similar to that of the value we get from the book. But in case of filling, the weight of the footing has to be considered while calculating the swell pressure. So that is up to the site condition. Now let us keep this as 0, then we'll get the value. Now let us compare with the value given from the book. So corner A4, so this is A4, 60.12. 60.541 almost okay similar to that of C4 it is 50.12 so 50.06 this is also okay and similarly for grid B1 so it is 42.62 42.43 so this is also similar so the calculation is okay that is with difference to the book we are going okay so the remarks that is the swell pressure is satisfied now let us go for the average stress computation for calculation of the bending moment so according to the book in the x direction the raft is divided into three strips that is three equivalent beams so beam aa beam bb beam cc so we'll do that as well always insert the cell above the highlighted so we'll simply add above this drag it down so the general idea over here is the length we'll consider the maximum length in that particular direction x direction and the raft is divided into three number of strips so one two and three so the maximum length is seven meter so we'll be considering that length for calculation of the maximum moment so w 43.87 that is averaging of the value in that particular direction so we are considering cc so we'll be considering the value of c that is one two 3 and 4 we will be taking the average value and moment wl square by 8 or wl square by 10 you can find this from the book as well so here you can see uh, since there are only two span we will be uh, considering wl square by 8 and for the span where there is more than 3 the bending moment is obtained by using a coefficient of 1 by 10 and l as the center of the column this so we get the maximum moment so we have to do this for four number of strips because the raft is divided into four numbers. Now this is the moment and these are the unfactored moment. Now we have to calculate the depth on basis of the moment and punching shear. So maximum moment we will consider the maximum value from all this and we get 395 and make sure that it is factored with 1.5. So we'll take the maximum value from all this and multiply it 1.5, 395.93. From SP16, we'll compute bending moment and we'll compute the depth. So depth required from the moment consideration is 315 mm. Now check for two-way shear. So for M30 grade of concrete, permissible shear stress is KS tau C. So 1.37 Newton per mm square. This is from IS456. You can get it from there. Now we have three cases that is as I have already shown for the S column, for the face column and the, for the central column. So this is the criteria, this is the face S column and this is the face column and this is the central column. So according to the load and the type of the column, the critical column will be considered and depth will be considered or computed on the basis of the load. Uh, I have already uh, prepared a formula that will check for the S column from the table, here you can see. It will consider all the values and will choose the maximum load. Distance of column phase from the property line. So from our case, we have 0.3 from the center of the column and from the face column it will be 150 that is 0.15. So face this will be 150 mm. Column load 550. So here you can see it will consider all the corner column value and will return the maximum one so for now for corner column one two three four 
the maximum value is 550 so you can see here 550 kilonewton and from the condition that is shear strength is greater than shear stress the value is obtained that is the depth required that is 447 mm you can also check this here for the corner column for load of 550 depth required is 447 so this is okay now for edge column that is face column so now let us compute for the face column and for the face also the edge distance is 150 mm and column load it is designed for 1500 kilonewton and the value comes as 655 mm you can find this here also 655 mm okay let us check for the central column as well so the maximum central column load is 2000 kilonewton and the depth comes as 605 kilonewton so we have to provide value greater than this three and moment consideration so 655 and considering clear cover as 50 mm and the bar size as well let us provide 720 mm as the overall depth so effective depth will be 662 which is greater than the value computed so the depth provided is safe or is sufficient against bending and two-way shear consideration now final step is calculation of reinforcement maximum moment we have this and minimum area of steel so basically we used to do 0.12 percent of the gross area but for mat we will consider as 0.15 percent and this comes as 1080 mm per square per m meter and maximum moment and area of steel required from this formula ast comes as 1427 mm square per meter so size of rebar provided let us provide as 16 mm spacing required 127 considering workability considering workability at site let us provide in the multiple of 25 so we provide 125 mm center to center and the area of steel provided is 1488 mm square per meter which is greater than that of the required one so overall the summary grade of concrete m30 grade of steel fe 500 and provide 720 mm thick slab with 16 mm bar at 125 mm center to center both ways and finally we'll simply copy this and paste it in the report simply select this and click on the auto fit content and you can simply remove the setting and your report is complete i hope this video helped you and if it did help do like and comment in the video and subscribe our channel and if you want this excel sheet click on the link in the description box and request for the access you will get a mail from us thank you